Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Wild at Heart show, Real Authentic and Cut. This is the show for men, by men, about men here on USA Global TV and Radio. I'm the host of the show and the creator. My name is Roland Friedel. And yeah, besides of the shows, I do the Mallorca Connection here on USA Global TV Radio, where we interview interesting people. We also do the Wild at Heart show as now. Also, the Earth Show together with my colleague Marcin and together with the founder and the CEO of the station of Dr. Jürgen and Kerbeck, we do It's Your Healthy Lifestyle. And now it's time for the Man Show. And today's topic is what are the levels of passion in a relationship? Yeah, or the last couple, the last two shows, we talked about uh, how passionate can men be in general. And today we want to talk about because we found out that we should also bring in relationship, passion, passion in a relationship. That's we're going to talk today. We are free today. It's not me, only me. So, and yeah, and if you missed one of the other shows, uh, please go on USA Club TV and Radio or on our website on bonfiredogs.com. When you click on episodes there, you find all recordings of all the previous other shows. But let's get started and bring on the... Two other guys, two other gentlemen who joined me today on this uh, interesting discussion. So let's welcome from Germany, my dear friend, Christian. Hi, guys. Hi, Roland. Man, Hi, first of all, I got to say, you're looking great, man. Thank you. Yeah, I tried to do my best. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Oh. Good to have the show back. Uh, to... Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm curious um, about this one again. And, uh, well, we'll see what Red has to say. Let's um, bring him up. What do you think? Yeah, let's bring up Red from Texas, from the U.S. Red. Howdy, y'all. Howdy, hey, Red. Hi, Red. Hi, Red. Great to see you. Nice to be seen. <laughs> Great to have you on the show, guys. Yeah. So, yeah, the topic is we continue the other shows. We have been talking about how passionate can men be. And then we found out maybe we should also talk about passion specifically in relationships and i guess there are different levels because you know when you see somebody the first time or when you date somebody for the first time or when you stay longer engaged or when you stay along and married for a long time or just a relationship for a long time maybe there are different levels i don't know maybe there are maybe not <laughs> i'm not an expert on that but let's find out because it's in an interesting show um you know, I know, Red, you are married happily for many, 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 many years. Uh, Christian, I guess you have been married too. I was married twice and had some relationship. So let's get let's get started. Who wants to join in? Back in the uh, 60s and 70s, there was a TV show called The Adams Family. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, Morticia and uh, Garcia, whatever his name was. I think Gomez. By, Gomez, you're right. Were by far, absolutely by far, I mean, head and shoulders, above any other tv show on passionate relationship you know if you just take a look at the way the two of them you know respond to each other their verbal cues their eyes their hugging their everything there was no doubt in anybody's mind that they were a passionate couple and nobody has ever come even close to that on on tv i mean it's just it, it it's it's a level way way far but now is that exaggerated well maybe for that show because of the the genre they were in with the eerie and spooky and stuff, but but the relationship that you saw on screen was by far, uh, you know, the most passionate that you would see. And I'm talking about bedroom. I'm just talking about you know 
they walk by each other and their, their looks and the, the comments and everything that they make, the smiles, all those kinds of things. I, I don't know if you all agree or not, but that's that's my opinion on that one. I, I remember the show, wasn't it in black and white? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I remember it. Yeah, it was always fun to see. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, actually, when you talk about it, Red, yeah, I remember it. You know, they were sparkling, or really, the contact of the air. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I guess he was always so in love with her when he looked, he looked at her. I remember it. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So if you're looking at passion in a relationship, you know, it could be, it's more than just being courteous. I think we all have just a, a simple, you know, we open the door and we do things for people. Uh, but it's, it's more than that. It, it, it has to be because, you know, if that's your soulmate, that's your, that's the person who's you know, your whole reason for being alive. Uh, you know, there are some times that maybe either one, the wife or the husband doesn't want to be passionate in public, which, you know, it's, it's a fair, fair statement. You know, you don't want to grab their arms, put them up over their head, push them against the wall, and you get 15 people around staring at you. That's that's not, yes, yeah, passion, but it's not appropriate passion. Uh, so there's there's things that, you know, appropriate passion, I think, yeah, we, I, I don't think you can have a long-term relationship and not have some level of passion in there that's renewed on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But um, in in my um, in my opinion, if I uh, watch people, if I watch couples, they have strange ways showing their passion. Sometimes, like um, uh, Morticia and Gomez, they they are, as far as I know, they're always respectful. And even if Morticia starts throwing knives at him, he goes like, "Oh, look at the elegance." Oh, this is so great. This is so great. He's always so into love with her. And, and he tells her, I love that. So in the, when I watch um, people nowadays, yeah, there's passion, but there's more like they're, they're, they're living it out in, in, in a feeling of anger and stuff like that. So I don't like that too much. Well, you know, just saying I love you to somebody, whether there's others around or not, even if you just go you know, over and just whisper in their ear. Uh, you know, to me, that that's a level of passion that just keeps the relationship going. I mean, I tell my wife that minimum a dozen times a day, sometimes much more than that. Uh, and sometimes we're just sitting there watching TV, the you know commercials come on or something, and I'll you know not shout it at her, but I'll look over and look at her, and uh, or in the car, whatever it may happen to be. So I think it's one of those things that it, it's recognizing that the love exists, and part of that love is being passionate on occasion where it's appropriate. Yeah, and um, the 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 another thing is um like what what language of passion you speak, like are you are you a touchy person so you show your passion in touching people like a hug, like just walking by or stuff like that and um, having a little uh, little touch when you walk by, or is it in words or is it in presence stuff like that. Well, sometimes you just need a long hug just because it generates a lot of oxytocin, which makes you yeah. feel good. Yeah, so there's a biological response in the body from a hormonal respect that just that hug, even if it's 15, 20, 30 seconds, is enough to just make you feel good. You know, it's like take a deep breath and hold it. And I usually say take a deep breath, hold it for 30 minutes. Uh, but, you know, most of the time, yeah, just hold it for a few seconds. But those things do change us. And just the mere act of, of, of a hug, I think, goes a long, long ways to just it, it's another way of saying I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our hack is very healing. It's very healing. But this, this is something. Oh, this is great. I, I, I got something. So when I see people hugging each other and they start just touching here, only the shoulder parts. They, they go like the, the back stays behind and only the shoulders are touching. Yeah, yeah. So this is like, man, what is this? This is yeah, not yeah, 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 like this. A real hack for me is like touching whole body, like from up to yeah. from from head to toe, and and really ah uh, tight. That's a hug. Yeah, yeah, you can see it much feel, sometimes, you know, when you see of the other person. Yeah, you can see it sometimes when you see this famous people in a newspaper or somewhere, when he kisses her and she's like this, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or, or they turn their shoulder so you can't even get your know, front body contact. It's just they they want to, yeah, hugs away, but you're only going to get part of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah part I of me, right? Just, I, I see, like I see that a lot. you know. Trying to escape, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but Christian, you mentioned something interesting. You said uh, the different when we talk about passion, the different languages we use. So it can be that, for example, I'm a, 
I, I'm a kinesthetic person too, so I love to hug, I love to touch, I love to touch. My ex girlfriend not at all, so she didn't like it. Yeah, so she was more about talking. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm very, not very much talker. So it, it can happen that both love each other or have a passion for each other, but they show it on a different way, and the other one doesn't recognize it that the other one is passionate and is in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. This is this is, this is sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they're um, just I, having different languages. Yes, exactly, exactly. And it's not something you can fix easily. And it's just that's, you know, you try to fix something and you're not going to get what you desire. But down the road, yeah. It, yeah, incrementally, yeah. you might be able to make a change. But if you want a you know, light switch change, no, not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But this is something um, if you if you uh, can can if you know your own love language, if you know your own passion language, so you can start communicating that and then then things are getting easier and easier. Well, part of it just all starts with talking. You know, if you're not yep. talking, you know, then you're not sharing anything. And we talked, I think, two or three or four episodes back about, you know, sharing intimate thoughts with, with somebody. And, you know, there's a level of trust there, but, you know, usually that level of trust is kind of implicit well not even implicit it's explicit when you get married you know maybe you're just living with somebody it may not necessarily be as explicit but certainly you know when you sign on the dotted line and you are now married to somebody there's there's more than just an implicit relationship and level of trust that's there because otherwise you would never have gotten that far mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i got um i i just a few days ago i read in uh, in one of those i don't know what you call it these, these journals we have in germany like like uh, scientific stuff and they were they were uh, writing there that when when we hug each other, our um, I only know the the Latin uh, the, the the Latin name you know the the solar plexus mm-hmm. here this this yeah. um, they are they are electrically um, in, in in infecting each other like they're they this is like a, a transformer in electric in oh. <laughs> in electricity so if if my current and the current of my hugging partner we come together that mixes and this um gives us energy on a on well, an elec- on an electric way so well, this is, well this think is about great. it your heart your heart is really driven by electricity sure sure, sure and sure. so you have an electric field you have the blood flowing you have everything there yeah it may not go out two or three inches from the body as far as being measurable but you interface somebody you know on it, it, right it on is. It is yeah. measurable, right? It is measurable. Yeah, I, but I don't know how far out it is measurable. You know, can you measure it at a half a mile? No. Can you measure it at 30 feet? Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, there's that. it's a measurable. But you put two people right together and they're there for more than just a couple seconds. Yeah, there's going to be some level of, of intertwining of those electrical currents. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't understand. I can't not imagine it. This is like, um, I think that the finest... Um, measuring instrument is a human so when i enter a cafe and i'm in the right mood and i'm kind of charismatic and stuff like that and there are five women sitting on the other end of the room they will recognize me even if they don't see me they will turn their heads because they feel me this is this is sensible this is great this is absolutely mind-blowing for me well you know something that's very interesting is we had a couple uh, people on my show, The Wise Ones, and it was accidental that we happened to get into it. But these two people, totally independent and different, uh, were big time into Argentinian ballroom dancing, which is some of the most sensa- you know, sensual because you were literally locked solar pleasant to solar pleasant at times with somebody dancing. And so when you think about when you're dancing, you know, that, that, that interweaving of the, the electrical fields is there. Uh, but when you add the music to it, you add the movement, you add the other things to it, it enhances just the mere fact that you're standing still. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. Of course, it's a light movement. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you, this is so amazing. People are so amazing. So when you were in the CIA, uh, Christian, and you could scan the whole room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, can, you can pick out the good guys and the bad guys pretty easily, especially the good girls. I, I so, guess yes, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of guys will contact you, Christian, and write an email through our website and say, hey, what's your secret? What, what are you doing? Teach me. Teach me. Teach me, yeah, Tiger. Well, I can. <laughs> yeah, but just like, the heart, 
Yeah, the heart puts out waves. So does our brains. I mean, it's it's amazing. You know, those brain waves go all over, and and some people are very nicely aligned. And uh, you know, it's, how many times have you heard somebody say something or you say something? I was just thinking about that. Uh, it's just yeah. it happens much more often than than we care to think about. It just it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So it's Gentlemen. not uh, it's not unusual for Christian to walk in and have that that mental clarity with other people because. Well, number one, he's trained his body, his brain in order to recognize it. a lot of us don't. Uh, and I think that's, you know, kudos for, for Christian because that's something special. And uh, and he should be aware. And same thing, I'm sure if there's danger there, he's going to pick it up also. I think that kind of. You know, in, in fact, the, the thing is, it's I, I don't think it's special. Everybody has that ability to do that. Yeah. Everybody. We're, we're almost all built the same. Like our, our, our genetic code isn't that much yeah. different so we all got no, a nose but, we got ears we stuff like that so but, we, but you have kinda... but you have the ability to discern it at a yes. more clear level than others because yeah. you recognized it and then you start recognizing it some more start recognizing and if we don't recognize it we never you know grow that skill yeah sorry to cut true. you off roland uh, gentlemen i have a question to you because sometimes i hear you know uh we, I don't have any passion anymore in my relationship. The passion is gone. My question is, can you lose passion? Because I don't understand it. Like, when you revert terms like passion, love, or whatever, can you lose it? Can you have it? Is it a decision or that you are in love with somebody? Or is this a, a clear, conscious decision that you have a passion for somebody? Or can you lose it? Or if you lose it, how do, do you get it back? I'm sure you can lose it. The question is, it's up to you. I mean, it's, it's like you have somebody who knows really competent for a job and you say it's yours to lose. And they go in there and they screw up the interview and they lost the job. So, yes, I think you can lose it because if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, you're going to offend somebody. You're going to go over a line you shouldn't have gone over. There, there are a lot of things that we do sometimes intentionally, not knowing it's intentional, sometimes intentionally because we don't want it. So I think it's, yeah, absolutely. I think we can do that. Now, uh, interesting can you get it back? A different animal. Do, do you, do you lose it or is it gone somewhere else? Yeah, that's what, that's what I just wrote. I think you don't lose it. It's just, it's just moving because in, 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 uh, in scientific words, you can't lose energy. It's just transforming. It's going somewhere else. Like, heat is going into movement or stuff like that so i think if you if you are passionate uh, in a relationship for a woman and um this doesn't work out anymore so you you shift your passion maybe to another woman or to another man or to whatever to a car to i don't know so i think you don't really it's not able to lose energy it's just um going elsewhere yeah. Yeah, but if you transform it into hate or something else, now you have another problem yeah. that, that shouldn't have been there to begin with because yeah, you had an energy field that was established, was working. Okay, now that energy field has a different focus, whether it's a car, doesn't matter, another woman, doesn't matter, it's no longer focused where it needs to be. And then what you know, what was you know, I'm a cause and effect kind of guy. That's what I do for a living. I look at you know what caused the the relationship to to stop being as passionate as it was. And those are very hard things to pick out because it's not a single thing. It's incremental things over a long period of time that somebody says, that's the final straw, no more. And it mm -hmm. was, wasn't a big deal. It was just a, a tiny little thing, but it was just too many of those tiny little things. Mm. Yeah. But I, I believe in when both men and women, as a couple, the passion is gone for, for, for any reason. Yeah. Uh, when both decide, okay, let's do a restart that they can bring the passion back. But I guess it needs both, both who, who are willing to, to work on the, let's say, work on the relationship to bring the passion back. Do you think it's possible if both are willing to work on that? Well, I think you hit it on the head a little while ago, Roland, when you said you're kinesthetic uh, and your girlfriend was more verbal. Well, you know, it's part of our learning curve that, okay, if she's verbal and you're kinesthetic, that needs to be shared. So you can say, this is, this is what I need occasionally, or, you know, and you start, sharing as we talked about three weeks four weeks about that trust issue of being able to talk and be able to to share some some things because a lot of times you know we get put off but okay I'm, she doesn't have a need to know or, or whatever it may happen to be and now you know you you've short-circuited yourself 
from something that could have been uh, because of whatever reason, you know, have a half a dozen of them at least easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Comes back to okay, communication. First thing, I really love this talk. You guys are great. You guys, absolutely great. Thank you very much. Um, I think, uh, rolling to your question, like, um, I think it's the healthiest way to start again, like if both decide to do it. Um, because if only one side starts, um, it's kind of like bending and then maybe the personality will break and then it's like, well, not healthy again, so it's toxic. So, yeah, I think it's possible and it's a good way to start from both sides. Like, um, yeah, yeah, one step the men, one step the women or different. Well, but both are moving. That's a good way. And yeah. um, there's there was a comment like... Um, our energy goes to ourselves to focus to focus on our projects. Um, this is something I think um, you have to be aware that you don't start losing people because if you focus too much on yourself, you might lose some people. And that, well, I don't know. I like people, so I don't want to be alone, really. So maybe this is something something to focus on. If you if you focus on your projects, don't start losing people you like. Well, you know, you also have other situations that happen in life. Let's say. You know, some get somebody gets sick. You know, they're in an automobile accident. They're laid up for a while. You know, there are things that change very quickly in a relationship. And if that that trust and that love and that passion is there, you know, that's going to last throughout that entire relationship. Even sometimes with the drugs and other things, your hormonal imbalances. There's all sorts of things there that, oh, that's not the same person I married. Well, it is, but there's things going on in that person's mind that, uh, if we're not compensating for the fact that yeah it's the drugs talking not the person and i yeah. and then sometimes there's guilt because you know oh one of the guys used to work for me his wife was driving all of a sudden blowout ran across the highway a car went in the air crashed and killed several other people when it came down and you know he was a basket case for a long time well he was his wife was and, and as a result he was too and so you know there are things that happen you know, if we start a blame game that there's just so many things that we are not, uh, let's say, I, I don't want to use the word competent to handle. We just never been in that situation and we don't have the experience how to handle to get us out of that situation. Uh, and I think that just like you're talking about, you want to get two people back together. Well, if we've never done that, that's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the things, um, by the way, I like about NLP. Um, as how I learned it, yeah, like Richard Bandler said, so it, it teaches us flexibility. So this is great. If you if you are in a situation you never had before, uh, you got some NLP on your mind. So it makes things quite easy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can agree with it. Because sometimes, you know, when when, when life is really hitting me, I'm, I'm, it takes for me two hours and then I'm, I'm okay again. I'm okay again. Yeah, really. Absolutely. But it doesn't matter what it happened, you know. I, I was really fucked. Sorry for this, YouTube. I was really fucked last week several times by the authorities and stuff like that. And then I crashed my motorhome. And today I was robbed and somebody stole my my two ten thousand or twelve thousand dollar Rolex today. They really robbed it from my arm. Uh but I'm, I'm still okay, you know. It, it smashes me down, and, and two hours later I'm I'm here on the show and I'm good. I'm always positive. And, and that's what I want to say. It's, it's all about being flexible and and taking the best part of it. But when I talk about, about that's why I'm, I'm very passionate about, for example, doing the show. That's why I always show up. But my question is in relationship is. Are there, are there different forms of, of being passionate in a relationship? Can you, can you specify a little? Yeah, but what, what exactly is being... My question is, what is what exactly is being passionate in a relationship? What does it mean? It's, um, it's, it's me, your feeling. It is something that you feel about the other or it is something that you do for the other? What, what is it? Or is it what, what is it? Being passionate in a relationship. What, what is it? For me, passion. being passionate is... Um, the first thing is that I'm, that I'm able and willing to show my emotion. The thing is not having it, but to show it. To okay. be, be able to really speak it out. So, hey, I love you. Hey, this is great what you're doing. Hey, I like your food. Hey, you're looking great. Hey, stuff like that. So um, 
I love the way you walk, stuff like that. Being passionate is to, to have the, the courage to speak it out. This is, I, I think this is, um, yeah. yeah, to feel it first, of course, you have to, you have to know what you're feeling and then to just let it out and being yeah. respectful and stuff like that and always worship the, the person. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Christian. You hit it on the point. Uh, that, that has to that has to happen because the rest of it won't happen if if that doesn't start it. Yeah. Okay, meaning to to have a passion for somebody means to be very present and feel something positive, of course, and express it to the other person. Let the other person know. I, I think. Sorry, Red. Go ahead, Christian. Thanks. I think um, negative emotions can also show passion. If you show someone, hey, I don't like what you're doing. I really don't like it. So you're, you're, you're really speaking from your heart. That's all. So and this creates this, this polarity between two people. And, and this makes like magnetic stuff. So they come together again and they talk about it or they do, well, you know, bedroom things, stuff like that. So and that equals it out. Everything's fine again. So we're smooth. Stuff like that. So I think passion can be in in uh, in all directions, in in positive feelings, negative feelings, as long as it is in a in a good and healthy way. And if you take that that sine wave that you're talking about, that up and down roller coaster of good passion, bad passion, whatever, love hate relationship of certain things, and you combine it with Roland's time frame of two hours, he can set his watch. Okay, in two hours, I'm going to be fine. And he. Uh, knows that's his body that's the way he reacts uh that's i think that's we're knowing ourselves far better than a typical person because we've been through these things and we know what what it takes to to defuse something uh you know who is the guy i can't think of the name. uh he used to use an expression don't take that class you know basically it's, i don't want to go there don't don't talk about it so yeah he would be very quick in, in Christian's vernacular there of, I hate, you know, it's before you even get to the, hate don't go there. Don't you? And so don't take that class. So occasionally you know, my wife will say something, don't want to take that class because we know that if you start going down that road, you know, you're going to get emotion. You, you're going to start bubbling up in things that maybe you don't want to. I mean, maybe another time you can do it, but right this minute, no. And I think that's, a, that's a big thing to realize that yeah, people have hot buttons. And if we continually poke the bear, you know, it's, it's not going to be a good scene. Yeah, so I'm I'm really I'm really making up my mind about what Roland said. Like if okay, I'm 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 trying something really really strange now. I'm trying to get into a woman's mind. So I think when I am when I, when I would be a woman and I meet a guy who's that cool and that certain, like he's in two hours back to like normal. If he's getting robbed, if he's crashing his car, if he's ruling, if he's if he's um, losing his, his his watch, stuff like that, and two hours later he's the fine guy again and he's cool. I would marry that guy. Sorry, <laughs> this is something you can rely on. This is something you can rely on. This is a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just I, I actually I, I just realized that it um, that it's been robbed an hour and fifty minutes ago. No, um, yep. You know that the point is, of course, I was shocked. Uh, a, a, a little bit, but what I learned in my life is I can change it. Okay, why worry? I cannot change it. Why should I worry? <laughs> why worry? Why worry? Can I change it? I change it. I cannot change it. This situation I can change. It's gone. It's gone forever. I cannot change it. So it is like it is. What? Should, why worry? It doesn't. Why should I spend the rest of the day of the week or the month of my life and worrying about things I cannot change? It happened. Bad. Yes, but. Life goes on. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Yeah, be happy. Yeah. <laughs> it is like it is. I don't know. But uh, Christian, I, I want to refer to something that you mentioned before. Uh, we talked about uh, we talked about passion, so negative emotion that come up. Somebody's screaming at you and said, "No, this I don't like it." Then it's kind of, this. To be honest, gentlemen, I'm, I'm very open now. This was a huge learning, and and in the beginning, it was a huge confusion for me with my last relationship. Because she was very, very emotional and she was shouting at me and, and screaming at me and really hitting me very, very, and I did something wrong, really extremely. And I was always so shocked. Uh, and then I was even more shocked that even she was so upset with me or upset with me or whatever. Yeah, she was furious. 
she didn't leave. She, 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 she stood in a relationship because I, my experience was when my dad was upset with me and he was almost all the time upset with me because he was upset with himself. But anyway, I, 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 my learning was, okay, somebody screaming at me, this person doesn't like me. And I was always escaping. And then I learned this in this relationship because the other relationship was not like that. And this was somebody screaming at me. And I said, oh, fuck. I always tried to, to escape. And then said, oh, she's still there because she took an hour, two hours, three hours, half an day by themselves. She came back and everything was fine. And I said, oh, that's strange. I never experienced this in my life before. <laughs> never ever. That's, that's a learning. That's actually a learning. And I learned that um, because I never... Uh, I never expressed negative emotions in a relationship. I never did it. I never did it. Never, ever. When I was pissed off with somebody, shutting down, working on myself on that, not healthy. And at the end, it was not healthy for the relationship. So that's, that's my message to the gentlemen uh, out there watching us. Express your emotions and learn to express your emotions. First of all, recognize them, what you have. Uh, get into it, what, what you're really feeling, and then talk about it. But, yeah. you know, the, the timing issue, I think, is something because, you know, let's say that, Roland, you're a runner, for instance, and you had a, a bad experience, you know, car wreck, whatever, and you're able to just go out and run for five miles and you come back. I mean, you know, the endorphins, just that everything, you know, changes. We have a lot of ways of getting rid of that stress. Uh, I use EFT. That's, you know, the, the tapping and stuff. And I find that if I do it for less than five minutes, it's worthless. But if I do it for eight minutes or more, it's very highly effective. And so if I'm sitting in the, I'll leave the gym in the morning, I sit in the car and I got a bunch of things I need to get done. I go through a routine. I'll set the clock for, you know, alarm clock for 10 minutes. Then I know when it goes off that I have enough reinforcement in what I want to do, wherever my focus is for that particular day that I can use that, those freedom techniques to get myself going. But if, if I don't put that much time into it and whether that time is two hours according to the clock or half hour running or whatever, may have, there are ways that we can, accelerate you know our our explosion of a badness for lack of a better word back down to some sense of normalcy that we can get back into our life and and uh, and live comfortably i love this movement you did i love this movement you did this yeah, from, yeah. from here this is um, tai chi you did tai chi yeah, right now yeah. well I, I was doing the tapping moment with the and it, it may have come down in that yeah, same vein of the, uh, you know, calming the body, calming the brain. Great. I like the Qigong and the Tai Chi both. Oh, yeah. That's great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, in, in, in a relationship, to, to, to keep the passion or keep the fire on, let's call it, keep the fire on, is it necessary that... Both have our maybe work together, have a project together, have a hobby together. Is this necessary or not? To to. I don't know. I don't know if you could it if you, if you can can put it that way. Like if it's necessary or not. I think it's an individual decision. Like for some yes, for others no. So go talk to each other, hug each other, and find out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think in some cases probably so. You know, especially if if you're passionate. Let's say that. I'm passionate about, you know, back when I was a teenager, uh, getting into my early 20s, you know, every one of our friends, we played cards. I mean, you know, hearts and spades. I mean, we, hours, you know, that was part of our, our passion back then. We get together at somebody's house, six, eight people, and it, the cards came out. And, you know, you get somebody who's a really good partner. And, uh, and, and later on, I'll join the Navy and we were in bridge clubs and things like that. And your social setting, you know, there's a lot of things there you can do together. And that you almost have that ability to, to talk without saying anything. And so I think that there's some things there now. You want to take something a little bit more mundane, cooking, uh, gardening, you know, whatever it may happen to be. There's probably some other painting. There's probably some other things there. That, well, maybe body painting might work. But never mind. Um, mm, yeah. Woo. <laughs> so there are, there are things that I think that you can combine and have a better passionate relationship because they're, they are both, levels of passion increase because you're both doing it um but you know if if there's something there that my wife loves to do that i don't you know i don't think that's going to happen and vice versa you know it just i you know we recognize okay I, i'm not into crocheting or something or whatever it may happen to be that's that's not my you know you want to crochet go for it um uh, 
you know, but come back again in a couple hours. Just, you know, let's just bury yourself there for two days crocheting. Uh, well, I guess it, I it's good agree. Have, when you have when you have a passion, a common passion for a hobby or an activity or a sports club or something like that. I guess it's 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 helpful, or not? Yeah, travel especially for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you're both sharing experiences at the same time, and you're getting instant feedback from each other. You know, well, how was that? Well, did you? You know, there's just all sorts of things, and then you know, she sees something that's different than I see. Uh, or, you know, somebody, my wife is very, very good. I mean, exceptionally good about seeing, you, know, you talk about NLP. Boy, she is like honed in on some of that stuff. He says, you know, what's wrong with that guy? I have no idea. Mm. You know, it turns out two weeks later, I find out he's in the middle of a divorce or something. But, you know, so, so she has the ability to kind of see in between the seams that I never knew there was a problem. Oh, yeah, big time. You can't, can't you see it? No, I can't. Yeah, I haven't been trained right. Mm. Uh. But, but NLP is a, is a very effective tool, uh, and I think in relationships and passion, it's probably a very desirable one to have because you can see things instantly. You know, just a little frown in the face or something. There's something that happened. I mean, uh, we were my wife and I were in San Antonio a couple of days ago, and we we're sitting there eating, and all of a sudden something happened, and she saw my face and she said, "Okay, what did you just see?" And it was just you know. It's, I didn't think it was that long, but she saw something there. And so I commented what I happened to see, which was unusual uh, and nothing, you know, that was it. But she saw that instantly. And it's just one of those things. I think it helps a relationship when you know that there's something the other person can see or feel that you experience. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But I guess there's, there's a difference between I'm interested in something or I have a passion for something. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Being interested is a is a mind game, and having passion is a heart game. Emotional, emotional yeah, heart, yeah. heart and yeah. brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Well, we're doing. Oh, pretty guys, well. that's a good one. Yeah, a couple of minutes left in the session today. I think we covered a lot of territory. Oh. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So um, my, my question to you, uh, Red, is because you you've been married for a long time happily. What's your secret of being still passionate in a relationship? What's your secret? Well, I get asked that question. It would be fifty five years in in July, and I think the one thing that makes that relationship last is you don't change somebody. You accept everything that's there. Uh, if there's a change to happen, the other person is going to say, you know. Can you help? But if you try to change somebody, it's, you're not going, neither one of the two people are going to be happy. Yeah. You, you know, I think I've mentioned this in shows before you love that person. You became emotionally attached to that person because of them, whatever they were doing. Yeah. 20 years later, they may not be doing the exact same thing, but it's still the same person. And if there's something there, you know, I wish you wouldn't do that. Well, you might express it one time to let them know that's not what you like, but you know, you don't harp on it every other day. Because that's that's not that's not passion number one, uh, it's miscommunication number two. Uh, it's not something that you want to, to develop a relationship on because now you're starting to dive over that at that edge and you don't want to hit that that bottom on that one. Like don't take that class. Uh, it, it's not one of those uh, that Jim uh, Rohn used to say that a lot. That's the guy who did that one. Mm. But but I, yeah, as long as you you know communicate you here communicate all the time, and I think that's good. But I think the big thing is don't change someone, you know, accept what's there, be flexible, um, you know, go out of your way to, you know, to, okay, look, it, it is what it is. I can't change. Just like Roland said earlier, I can't change it. Don't worry about it. You know, be happy. Well, yeah. be happy yeah. with something you don't like because it's yeah. such a minor thing. And if it's there, you can grow to like it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what I, well, that's what I experienced in my last relationship. She always tried to change me. I didn't try to change her because I said, there's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff. There's more good than bad stuff. So I'm still okay. So, yeah. But some people try to change you all the time and it's not working. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been great today, I think, guys. I think, I think um, one last, maybe. Uh, I think uh, one thing that Red is really good at is humor. Because I think if you don't have a good <laughs> sense of humor, man, you won't make it that long. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's dry <laughs> humor. 
<laughs> so <laughs> what? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But you're you're right. Oh, it, it, I, I think it adds to the personality when you can can do that on a, a regular. But it makes you feel good too. I mean, it's just no doubt about it. We feel better when we're laughing, we're smiling, we're happy. And so exactly. you have that. You're sharing that happiness with somebody else, uh, and it just it's contagious. Absolutely, it's humor. Absolutely, it's it's same to me. No, but something happened. I have a, a short, I have a shock face, but I try to have keep it as short as possible. And then go with humor and with fun, and and the world is still turning around and beautiful. Absolutely, it's it's like it's like it's like in life of Brian. You know, the last scenes yeah. always look on the bright side of life. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's absolutely. like Gomez dead, dodging the knives. It's coming from Morticia. I yes, still love no. you. I still love you, even though the knives. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your experience and open up. And I, yeah, I really want to encourage our audience, uh, contact us, uh, go to our main website. It's bonfiretalks.com. You can find the recordings of the show. And also you can email us if you want to add something, discuss something to the previous show, to this current show, or you have a topic that you want to have to discuss on the show, or you want to become a guest on our show, let us know. You're more than welcome because it's all about sharing and caring and spreading the message that men should talk to men. Christian. But don't. Don't write us. Don't call us if you want to work with us, okay? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Thank you, Christian. Okay, gentlemen, see you backstage. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot. Next Wednesday, same time, same procedure with a new topic. Thanks and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.